Hare Krishna, welcome to the lockdown program with Krishna under the umbrella of Govardhan Hill. Today we are reading and discussing the most beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam. So, let's just do a bit of kirtan. There is nobody around so far. Is set all right with you? Dharm, welcome. Samir, welcome. Kantamadji, welcome. I hope you can stay longer this time. Sarasvati Devi 
Hare Krishna, welcome to the lockdown. Hare Krishna, very much welcome everyone. Welcome Kantam Madhachi, welcome Dharm, welcome Amit, Samir, Rashmi and Ben. So, here we are assembled. Uh, ben Rishi and Rashmi, uh, uh, Vaishnavi and Amit, uh, uh, Sage Amit and Sage Samir and uh, Rishi Dharm and Vaishnavi Kanta. So we are all together here at the forest of Naimisharanya with all the great uh, sages and rishis, uh, starting from uh, Vyas to Narada to Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Shukra. Now, uh, uh, Sutta Goswami is present with us tonight, special honorable speaker, and Shaunaka Rishi is there, and Srila Prabhupada is there, and so many wonderful Vaishnavas here. Thank you very much for coming. Hare Krishna. I hope everybody is well. Uh, let's see if I have a little bit something to talk about before we start with the Bhagavatam. 
some quote. I have here something uh, envious of Krishna. That was a very nice, nice. Uh, we always seem to. It's difficult to say envious of Krishna. What does it mean to be envious of Krishna? So here we will read a little bit something what Srila Prabhupada has to say in explaining that, a little bit of uh, some quotes. And uh, we'll take it from there. A guest is asking Srila Prabhupada, may I ask a question? I was told that we come into this material world because of enviousness of Krishna. Prabhupada, yes. The guest again. On the other hand, I was told the spiritual world is ideal world and everything is ideal. So I don't see any reason why a person in the spiritual world must envy Krishna? That is a very good question uh, because we say in the spiritual world everything is perfect. So how can someone come down? How can someone become envious? So Srila Prabhupada is replying, no, not the spiritual world. Actually, spiritual world is divided into three parts. Absolute truth. The spiritual world is called the absolute truth. Your question is very intelligent. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Vadanti tat tat was with us, and so on, famous verse from the first canto, second chapter. Uh, means, learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non-dual substance Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. So here Srila Prabhupada continues. The absolute truth is manifested in three different stages according to our understanding. The absolute truth is one, but according to my capacity, I understand absolute truth in three features. Those who are trying to understand the absolute truth by dint of this imperfect knowledge, he comes to the conclusion that the absolute truth is impersonal. Suppose I give you a concrete example. A man is in darkness. He wants to come to the light. So when he comes to the sunshine, he sees the sunshine impersonal. But if he has got power to go to the sun globe, he sees something localized. And if he has power to see the sun god, he will see something personal. So, those who are outside the localized aspect and personal aspect of Krishna, those who are in the sunshine portion or in the effulgent portion, effulgent means minute particles of the soul assembled together. That's a very interesting also statement. That the Brahma Jyoti, the effulgence of the Lord, means actually minute minute particles of the soul assembled together. So this is all the little souls shining. This is a Brahmachoti. Just like the sunshine is a combination of molecular shining parts. Similarly, the spiritual sparks, when we simply congregate one place, that is called Brahmachoti. In that portion, because they have no information about the personality of Godhead, they are envious. Therefore, because the spirit soul by nature wants pleasure, just like if you remain, suppose you go with your Sputnik or airplane very high in the sky. If you don't get shelter in another platform or another planet, you come down again. You cannot remain there. Similarly, in, the, in our impersonal feature, we cannot remain. And why we remain in the impersonal, why we cannot remain in the impersonal nature? Because we have no information of the Supreme Personality. So this is a position. 
So because they cannot remain in that impersonal feature, they come down again to these material varieties of life. That is called envious. Enviousness means because they have no knowledge, they say, no, the supreme absolute truth cannot be personal. That is an enviousness. That is enviousness. Why the supreme personality should be impersonal? No, he is person, but we have to sufficient. We have no sufficient information of him. Therefore, we are envious, defying. Impersonalist is a person who is defying personalism. The impersonalist say will never agree that the absolute truth is person. That is enviousness. Therefore, they fall down. Patantyato falls down because he is impersonal. Just like in the sky, in the outer space, you cannot build anything. If you want to construct anything, nice house, nice garden, you have to come to this planet. Similarly, those who are impersonalists, they cannot have varieties of enjoyment. Therefore, they come down again on this material platform and they use their enjoyment intellect for philanthropic and humanitarian work. Again, they become entrapped by philosophy and knowledge and so on. Actually, the sum substance is those who are impersonalists, they are envious. Impersonalists are on the spiritual platform, but because they are envious of the Supreme Person, they fall down to the material world. Okay, that was this uh, short excerpt. Samir. Krishna, everybody. Um, <clears throat> uh, I've always wondered about this question as well. Uh, but, you know, originally, aren't we originally in the spiritual world with the Lord when we've our constitutional position is with the Lord at the beginning so <laughs> how can we that was a question we raised there? Now. that was a question in what just has been addressed what the guest was asking how if the spiritual world is all yeah. perfect it depends yeah, it depends where we come from, where we have been. If we were in the Brahma Jyoti, I will certainly fall down. No, but aren't we, aren't we originally, originally at the spiritual with Krishna, aren't we originally there? Yes, that's a long, 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 long way back in the meantime. We may have been absorbed into Mahavishnu many, many times, huh? and then we think we come from Mahavishnu. Yes, we come from Mahavishnu, but before Mahavishnu, we were in the spiritual world. But in the spiritual world, there are also divisions. Huh? The absolute truth. Spiritual world, there is a Brahma Chyoti, there is a Vaikuntha, and there is Goloka. So yes. I guess your question is how can we come down from there? Isn't that? That is. A, how can we come? How can we come down from the original our constitutional position? That's what I'm asking. Because yes, the Brahma Jyoti and all of that is is different because that's when we fall down and then we go to these different places. But if our constitutional position is with the Lord and we're with the Lord from our original time, how can we fall from there if we're supposed to be perfect? If we have still, we have our uh, independence, our minute independence. If we want to experience Krishna's external energy, then even Krishna says, don't, don't. There was a, once a beautiful drama play, it played by the Bhaktivedanta players, uh, with the soul, with Krishna, that I want to, I want to see this material energy. Krishna says, don't go, 
but I really, I really want. So by insisting, Krishna said, in that play, okay, you can go, but at your own. So we have that independence. Yeah. If we want to that- taste and see and touch and the material energies, then we can. I suppose I understand that part, but then that does mean that we're not we're not perfect there. Then that does mean that we are still not perfect because we're still thinking. Okay, we want to experience something, even though Krishna tells us not to do it, and we're still doing it. No, we still want to do it. It's just some some uh, what is the word for it? Inquisitiveness. Inquisitiveness. Uh, we still in the spiritual world. Also, we have our independence. It's not that uh, that makes that is perfect because we have that independence. Uh, most uh, souls are not coming down, but somehow or other we wanted to experience this material dream. We can go. We have gone. And it's a dream, and it's explained. Once we be back home in the spiritual world, it's just like a dream. Even so, we have been millions and millions of lifetimes there, but it is just like a flash. It's just like a dream. It just appears like a like a short dream when we are back and awake. But that is a um, Each old question. Uh, I don't think we can exhaustively uh, address that. And some uh, devotees and groups, uh, they explain it in a way that we are actually not coming from the spiritual world, we are coming from the Tatashta, and so many explanations there. But that is a, is a kind of a controversial topic, uh, And uh, different acharyas explain also sometimes in a bit of different ways. Huh? But uh, Srila Prabhupada used to address this question. Uh, if the house is on fire, and I like that version because we have got in the past in a very heated debate. And I remember... That, uh, some devotees were very much offended. Uh, very heated debate we had. Uh, what, where are we coming from and how are we coming down? And have we been actually with Krishna in Goloka or have we not? Uh, and so oh, different opinions have been there. And Srila Prabhupada, on this question, he often said, uh, if your house is on fire, You're not trying to find out where did the fire start, will we? Investigating, where did it start? Did it start in the kitchen? Did it start in the living room? No, the house is on fire, we're getting out without any question. So our house is on fire. We are in this material energy. This question, where are we coming from? How did we fall down? Uh, that is theoretical. Once we're back there, then we know her. So just to satisfy our theoretical curiosity, we should engage all our energies to get out of this place and to go back to our, as you said, Samir, our constitutional position. And I think here we leave it. Otherwise it goes on and on and on. If I find a more de- detailed explanation, I will share it with you. Okay. Let's go to our Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, we have the text today is text 29. I'll put it in the chat or you find it. Chat there is a chat for everyone. Text 29. Who wants to do the first reading? Volunteers. Volunteers. 
Kanta Mataji, you have disappeared so quickly last time. You want to read, you don't have to, but if you want to read, oh, Ben has his hand up. Oh, sorry, Prabhuji, because I need to attend the other Sangha, you know. Yes, so, that's okay. That's why I go, you know. Sorry, Will you but... stay today? No, no, no. I um, just have to leave. For a little bit, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, Ben. Hare Krishna. Uh, the microphone is yours. That is text 29. Read us uh, Sanskrit, the translation, the purport, and say a few words about it. These are very important verses. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, First Canto, Chapter 5, Text 29. Tajai Vammi Nuraktasya Prasritasya Hata hata na nasa nasa shradad hanasya balasya dantas yanu charasya cha. Translation: I was very much attached to those sages. I was gentle in behavior. All my sins were eradicated in their service. My heart, in my heart, I had strong faith in them. I had subjugated the senses and I was strictly following them with body and mind. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. These are the necessary qualifications of a prospective candidate who can expect to be elevated to the position of pure, unadulterated dev devotee. Such a candidate must always seek the association of pure devotees. One should not be misled by a pseudo-devotee. He himself must be plain and gentle to receive the instructions of such a pure devotee. A pure devotee is a completely surrendered soul unto the personality of Godhead. He knows the personality of Godhead as the supreme proprietor of all others as his servitors. And by the association of pure devotees only, one can get rid of all sins accumulated by mundane association. A neophyte devotee must faithfully serve the pure devotee, and he should be very obedient and strictly follow the instructions. These are the signs of a devotee who is determined to achieve success even in the existing duration of life. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Ben. Can you say a few words about it? What is the significance of this verse? Um, so, any um, to begin with, uh, just to um, uh, talk a little bit about uh, Narad Narad Muni here, because uh, it's describing his uh, uh, characteristics, um, and uh, also what had happened to him. Um, by engaging in the service of the pure devotees. So, um, 
he 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 was uh, he's saying he was gentle in behavior, and because he was uh, engaged in the service of these pure devotees, all his sins had been eradicated. He had developed a very strong faith in these pure devotees, and had been able to subjugate his senses, and he was strictly following them. Uh, with his body and uh, with his mind. So, Prabhupada, uh, in his purport, he's kind of outlining uh, uh, the qualifications of a uh, prospective um, candidate to become uh, uh, a devotee, someone engaged uh, in the devotional service of the Lord. Um, so he's like Prabhupada is saying that uh, we should seek the association of pure devotees. Uh, we should be careful not to be misled by pseudo devotees, uh, i.e., impersonalists and uh, bogies, yogis and rogies. Um, so, so basically, he's saying that if we if we serve the pure devotee, um, we should try to strictly follow his instructions. Um, and if we are if we are doing so, then uh, you know that means that we're uh, that we're displaying signs of uh, um, individuals who are determined to. to achieve um, devotional service and success in this life. Yay. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Ben. Well, sorry about that. It was a bit long-winded. But no, no. But it's okay. Okay. I seem to have some problem with the audio. I think it was on my side. I had to unplug and replug the mic. Anyway, it's okay now. Anyone has any question to this shloka? I got a message, or we got a message in the chat that Amar is here, but he is driving, so he's just listening, which is great, which is fine. So, any questions? I have a question for you, Ben, or anybody else. Uh, Srila Prabhupada writes, he knows the personality of Godhead as the supreme proprietor and all others as his servitors. What Bhagavad Gita verse comes to mind? Supreme proprietor, which... Ben, your hand is up. Yes. Oh, sorry. I, 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 yeah, I know this. Uh, is this the... Uh... Is this the verse where Krishna says is like the peace formula verse? Is there because he's a beneficiary? No problems. Uh, say can you again? I can hear can you. you hear, can you hear me? Yes. Um, no, it's like uh, this verse is. Uh, this is the verse. I think this is a verse. It may not be, but. Um, you know this the, this verse is the peace formula. Yes, he said Bhaktaram Yakyatapasam. Is the one where he says that uh, I am the beneficiary of all men, demigods, everyone. Yes, I'm thinking of a different verse. Maybe someone okay. else uh, has come. I'm thinking of Ahamsar Vasya Brabhavo. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. So wise who knows is perfectly engaged in my devotional service and worship me with all their heart. And then Ajuna confirms also the supreme proprietorship of Krishna. Param Brahma Param Dharma. Very important verse. You are the supreme personality of God, as the ultimate abode, the purest, the absolute truth. You are the eternal, transcendental, original person, the unborn, the greatest, and so on. 
And of course, St. Krishna in 9.11, he also says, uh, fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature as a supreme lord of all that be. And uh, in that verse, he says, Mama Buddha Maheshwaram, Mahaishwaram, Maheshwaram, supreme proprietor. It's translated in the word for word. So that's the supreme proprietor. So that verse is obviously applicable. Srila Prabhupada writes here in the purport, he knows the personality of Godhead as a supreme proprietor. So, anything else to this verse? Seeking the association of pure devotees. How can we seek the association of pure devotees? Where can we find the association of pure devotees? Amit, Rashmi, what do you think? Samir, such a candidate must always seek the association of pure devotees. So where do we find the association of pure devotees? Rashmi. No, there are instructions. One moment again. I, I think I have problems tonight. I have problems with my microphone. Can you hear me? Yes, Amit. Can you say that again, Rashmi? I missed that. The pure devotees have left their uh, writings. Their books are there, which they have written, uh, like Srila Prabhupada, like many others. Uh, Goswami Tulsidas, he wrote Ramayan. So there are all these pure devotees have written their teachings in all their books. So those, by that we are associating with them when we are reading and discussing those books, those those instructions, those kathas. We are indirectly direct. We are indirectly uh, associating with their thoughts, their rewritings, their realizations. Did you say indirectly? Directly, yeah, indirectly. They are not directly, like Srila Prabhupada is not there, but his teachings are there. So indirectly, through his books, we are associating with him. So indirectly. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. One moment. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, okay. I had to switch over to a different microphone. Uh, did, Rashmi, did you say directly associating or indirectly? Indirectly. They are not there. So directly, we, they, we can't meet them and not be there in their physical presence. So indirectly. No, that's actually not the case. That is directly associating with them. Huh? Because sound, sound vibration is it's there. Direct, that's a direct association. We cannot meet them. Uh, we give so much importance to seeing, meeting, seeing. Uh, but uh, actually, the hearing is superior to seeing. We always want to see, see. I want to see. What's the advantage of seeing? We don't even see our own eyelid. We don't even see what is in the next door, in the next room. We, our eyes are very, very limited. Uh, so we have to hear. Sometimes it's said we have to see with our ears. So actually, if you read Bhagavad Gita, uh, Srila Prabhupada is saying that, we have direct association with Krishna, not indirect. Direct. Direct means uh, uh, hearing. When we read Bhagavad Gita, we hear. That is direct association with Krishna and with Arjuna, Ben. No, I was just going to say that to Rashmi. Uh, the same thing, um, uh, because you said indirectly, but uh, no, it's not indirectly, it's, it's direct, because Prabhupada, uh, in his Vani, is, uh, is uh, present in his purports. Um, Prabhupada said, if you want to know me, uh, read my books, because his writings and his himself is like, is not different, you know. Thank you, Ben. Yes, this uh, transcendental potency has been directly invested. We're reading here Srimad Bhagavatam. 
the, tra the transcendental potency is there. Srila Prabhupada's potency, huh? Vyasadeva's potency, huh? Narada Muni's potency. We, we directly associating with his personalities, actually. That is uh, uh, generally in this world, we take it so easily. We have association only when we can shake hands, when we can uh, hug a person. Therefore, people feel so much uh, disconnected at the moment in the lockdown because for them association means seeing the other person, uh, shaking hands with the other person, face to face, uh, uh, hugging the other person. They're missing that very much because there are so much on that bodily, uh, physical platform. But in spiritual sound, the Bra Shabda Brahman, the spiritual sound, is, is, that is an absolute reality. Same when we chant Hare Krishna. It's not indirectly we associating with Krishna. No, we very much directly associating with Krishna when we chant Hare Krishna. That's a direct association. Anyone wants to say anything more? Amit, you want to say something? Your mic is on. No, Prabhu, I must have accidentally put it on. Okay. So, Ben, your hand is up. Um, it's like um, it's like Krishna as well, you know. Krishna is like um, is none different from his name his fame, his pastimes, and all his paraphernalia. All of these things and Krishna, they're like non-different. Yes, these things and, are... Yes, you want to say something more? Go no, on. I just wanted to say, maybe you... Would it be possible if you could explain a little bit more about that? Well, it's, it's just what you said. It's an absolute platform. And... Uh, we don't relate to this very easily because we are so much cemented on the relative platform in this world uh, that, uh, that the hearing in this world, we are on the dual platform. Uh, when we say water, we will not be satisfied with uh, our th thirst won't be quenched. Uh, we must have the substance of water to quench our thirst. Uh, but on the spiritual platform, it is not like that. Water means water. I was thirst just by the sound vibration of said name. So on the spiritual absolute platform, the name and the thing are non-different. Like Krishna, the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are non-different. It's not just Krishna has a name and Krishna is a separate person, but he has a name that is a material concept. Krishna and his name are one and the same. Samir, your hand was up. No, I put it down now. It's okay. Yes. So, again, direct association on the spiritual plane. The sound vibration is topmost important. Spiritual sound, we connecting with Krishna through the sound, we connecting with Srila Prabhupada through the sound, with Narada Muni, with Vyasade, with all the great Acharyas and sages. Okay, anything more to this particular shloka? That's a very, very important concept. We have touched on that many times and uh, we need to really understand, as Ben said, uh, Krishna's name, his qualities, his pastimes, his paraphernalia, all that is on the same absolute platform. It's all the same. There is no difference between the name and the person. Strange concept in our material world. There is such a big difference between the name or the sound and the person. There's such a big difference. It's not the same. We, we completely distinguish between the name of a person and the person. 
We are not satisfied just by calling the name of a person, but that is a material platform of duality. On the spiritual platform, that is very, things functioning very differently. Even spiritual sound in this material world, we are in this material world, but here, this sound, and we must be very much understanding that and being getting convinced of that. That sound of the Maha Mantra, that sound of the Bhagavatam, that sound of the Bhagavad Gita, that is non different from Krishna. That's on the same platform. It's not we're reading a book and uh, like when uh, reading uh, a novel. No. That sound vibration packed into material pages, seemingly, that sound vibration has all the potency of Krishna. And that holy name apparently to be just a name like so many names in this world has all the potency of Krishna. So that is actually a key we must understand to take advantage of that sound. That sound, that what we're reading is Bhagavatam, is Shabda Brahman, is spiritual sound. It's not material sound. When we come together here and reading Srimad Bhagavatam, that is spiritual sound vibration with all its potency to purify us. If it were material sound, it will just be filtered by our intellect, by our mind, uh, and it will be just another topic of knowledge. It's not knowledge. We are not after knowledge anyway. It says it's a full potency of the Lord. Therefore, we say, reading this beginning chapters of the Bhagavatam is revealing the lotus feet of soul. That is the Lord, said Bhagavatam. Ben. Why did you say we are not after knowledge? We are after Krishna. Yeah, but without knowledge, how can we achieve, uh, how can we, um, how can we attain Krishna? If we are desirous and have a devotional mood, Krishna will, I mean, knowledge of just Gyan. Yes, of course, we, we learn to know Krishna by reading the Bhagavatam, but knowledge I meant to say, knowledge for the sake of knowledge, Gyan, just accumulating knowledge, like we do in this material world, people are accumulating so much knowledge of so many topics and saying the Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam is just another book in our whole library of knowledge. So there is much more than that. Ben? No, it's because we're, um, we're, uh, we're developing knowledge of Krishna through reading uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. So we're trying to understand who is Krishna and what is Krishna like. So we're trying to, trying to know Krishna, trying to understand who is Krishna. But without this knowledge, what chance would we have to understand Krishna, to know about Krishna? That's my point. Yes, yes. But by associating with pure devotees or a pure devotee, then everything will be revealed in our heart. Everything. Takes the gopis of Vrindavan. They're not very knowledgeable. They're simple cowherd girls. But they know Krishna and they have their love and affection for Krishna more than anybody could even think of. So knowledge Gyan, on its own, is just Bahunam Janmanam Ante, after many, many births, uh, will come to the point of surrendering to Krishna. No, we, we are after, like this verse is discussing actually, that 
we are after the association of pure devotees. We want to hear this sound uttered by pure devotees and that is penetrating the heart and that is purifying the heart and Krishna will reveal himself from within her. If Krishna reveals all the knowledge to us, we don't need to read a single book. And you might remember that uh, short conversation with Srila Prabhupada who said, why have I written all these books? So much knowledge, of course. People like knowledge and they're connecting to Krishna through knowledge. Because people like to know more. And more. But Srila Prabhupada said, I've written all these books to convince you to chant Hare Krishna. That's a very interesting comment, to convince you to chant Hare Krishna. So if we are engaged in pure chanting of Hare Krishna, all that knowledge is not even necessary. The goal is achieved. But for us, yes, knowledge is a bridge, a bridge to have uh, association with pure devotees. And by that association uh, with Narada Muni, uh, we become purified. We become just like Narada Muni had the association. Okay, Narada Muni had physical association with the Vaishnava, pure Vaishnava Seha. But that same association can be achieved not physically, just by sound vibration. Ben. Please, uh, can, you, can you look on this knowledge as, uh, as being bhakti itself? Because um, the pure devotees, they they uh, espouse this knowledge to to forgetful souls, and in doing that, they're performing uh, bhakti. That's like their service to Krishna to to awaken the the sleeping souls in the world. So this knowledge is like. Well, can you see it as being uh, bhakti itself? Yes, of That's course. That's bhakti devi incarnate. Bhakti devi incarnate. Yes, you can see it like that. Huh? And that knowledge, not for the sake of knowing facts, but that knowledge is actually penetrating in our heart an awakening hour is just like uh, to give a, a crude example you have been in a, in a coma or someone has been in a coma or something like that and you're coming out of that coma and uh, your memory is uh, influenced uh, and someone is saying, oh, remember that, remember your mother, remember. And then slowly that memory is coming back. Oh, oh, yes, yes, remember, or even just not in coma, just a normal person, you meet an old friend. And he says, oh, remember when we did this and this uh, uh, 20 years ago? And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the feeling is coming uh, from that moment uh, and that feeling. Uh, uh, and with your friend, and oh, oh yes, I remember. So that knowledge of Krishna is just like that. By that association of the pure devotees, then we starting to remember, oh yeah, 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 that is Krishna. Oh, that is my friend, that is, oh yes. And we remember our actual home. It reminds us our actual home. We are in this material world, we so much engaged with external knowledge uh, that there is no much room uh, of this original consciousness to be awakened. Uh, we are sleeping fast because we have surrounded us with so many material objects and desires uh, for material objects and all of that. Uh, we are built with so many castles and walls and bricks and fortresses. Uh, and we have forgotten who we actually are. 
So yes, that is bhakti itself. That knowledge is bhakti itself. Anything else? Samir or Amit or Rashmi? If not, let's go to the next verse. It's also very wonderful shloka. That is text number 30. I'll take it on. Oh, you want to take it on, Samir? Your mic is on? I can take it on, yes. Okay, go ahead. Text 30. The microphone is all yours. Yanam guyat guyat mam yatat shakshad bhagavato ditam anyava kan kamisyante kripadina vatsalya. Translation and the purport by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Kijay. As they were leaving, those Bhakti Vedantas who are very kind to poor hearted souls instructed me in that most confidential subject, which is instructed by the personality of Godhead himself. Perfect. A pure Vedantist or a Bhakti Vedanta instructs followers exactly according to the instructions of the Lord himself. The personality of Godhead, both in the Bhagavad Gita and in all other scriptures, has definitely instructed men to follow the Lord only. The Lord is the creator, the maintainer, and the annihilator of everything. The whole manifested creation is existing by his will. And by his will, when the whole show is finished, he will remain in his eternal abode with all his paraphernalia. Before the creation, he was there in the eternal abode, and after annihilation, he will continue to remain. He is not therefore one of the created beings. He is transcendental. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Long, long before the instructions was imparted to Arjun, the same was instructed to the Sun God. And in the course of time, the same instruction being wrongly handled and being broken was again instructed to Arjun because he was his perfect devotee and friend. Therefore, the instruction of the Lord can be understood by the devotees only and no one else. The impersonalist, who has no idea of transcendental form of the Lord, cannot understand this most confidential message of the Lord. The expression most confidential is significant here because knowledge of devotional service is far, far above knowledge of impersonal Brahman. Jnana means ordinary knowledge or any branch of knowledge. This knowledge develops up to the knowledge of the personal Brahman. Above this, when it is partially mixed with devotion, such knowledge develops to knowledge of Paramatma or the all pervading Godhead. This is more confidential. But when such knowledge is turned into pure devotional service and the confidential part of transcendental knowledge is attained, it, it is called the most confidential knowledge. This most confidential knowledge was impo- imparted by the Lord to Brahman, Arjun, Uddhav, etc. Okay, thank you, Zamir. Can you say a few words? Yeah, um, okay. So, it's talking about, obviously, following the instructions of the Lord. So we have to um, follow the instructions of the Lord directly uh, without changing it, without um, 
manipulating it or any kind of, um, well, what's the word? Any kind of, uh, you know, uh, putting our own dint in it. We just have to uh, present it or receive it directly through the parampara system without having um, any changes. So that's the, the personality of Godhead um, is instructed Arjun, and obviously before that he instructed the sun god. And uh, because then obviously sometimes it gets broken through the through time, he then again instructs Arjun for our benefit so that we can understand this knowledge that we're talking about. And then this is confidential knowledge, as it says. And this confidential knowledge is different because when this knowledge is, as it says, turned into pure devotional service, then it becomes transcendental. Um, and I think that's it, yeah. Okay, thank you, Samia. I have a question for you. Srila Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that long, long ago, before the instruction was imparted to Ajun, the same was instructed to the Sun God. So, what are we talking about in Bhagavad Gita? Where so does it say, say so? It says, um, he says uh, to Arjun that Arjun, um, I can remember. I can remember all the all the births um, that you cannot, because Arjun was asking that how come, you know, you instructed how come you instructed the sun god because the sun god was. He was asking the Lord, the Sun God is older than you, or whatever. Mm. He, then he then explains that, uh, you know, this is the only, obviously, the birth that you remember. But I remember all your different births. And so that was the actual verse there in the Bhagavad Gita. That's actually the verse after her. The verse before in 4 1, it says, the personality of God that Lord Sri Krishna said, I instruct this imperishable science of yoga to the Sun God, Vivaswan. And Vivaswan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind. Manu. And Manu in turn instructed it to Ikshvaku, which was his son. So that is directly referring to uh, that verse. Yes. But what is Srila Prabhupada saying? And you mentioned that uh, the Siblic succession was broken. Uh, which verse is that? It's the next verse, 4 3. I'll, I'll read it. That very ancient science of the relationship with the Supreme is today told by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend and can therefore understand the transcendental mystery of this science. So it was re-spoken. How does, how does it, how does a disciplic succession break? Anyone? How does a disciplic succession, how can this knowledge, it appears to be lost, Krishna says. Therefore he spoke it again to Arjuna. How can it be lost? Ben, ben. Hi, oh, Rashmi, hi, Rashmi. Uh, sorry, Ben. No, Rashmi. Uh, Ra so, uh, let's say, for example, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, it was uh, spoken, uh, it was written by uh, Ved Vyas, it was given by, the knowledge was given by Brahma to Narad, Narad to uh, Ved Vyas, and then Ved Vyas wrote it. Uh, wrote the Srimad Bhagavatam. Then from Shri, uh, then that knowledge from there went to his son uh, Shukadev Goswami, who spoke it 
uh, to Parikshit Maharaj and all these sages of Dandakaranya and Sutta Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj, they all heard it. Then Parikshit Maharaj repeated to his mother. So let's say if that uh, 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 knowledge had been given to, had not been, had Sukadev Goswami had kept it to himself, let's say, example, and he has not spoken it. So then that chain will be broken. Or if he has not written it, for example, uh, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. So uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, it came from uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It went to um, uh, Swarup Damodar, then from Swarup Damodar and, and, and like that, like that. Then ultimately Krishna, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, he, got, he heard it from his two spiritual masters. Uh, had he not written it down, how would it have reached Srila Prabhupada? So then from, he wrote it, so it passed down, down, down. I've forgotten that uh, chain, uh, but uh, it reached Srila Prabhupada. Had Srila Prabhupada not uh, translated uh, the version, Bengali version into English for us, the chain is gone, finished. But so if somebody does not read it or write it for us or uh, say it to us, Shri, Shruti or Smriti, then it's finished, the chain is broken. Thank you, Rashmi. Yes, you could think of it like that, but it is much more than that. Uh, of physically being broken, that uh, Parikshit uh, would not have spoken it to Uttara, or Shukadev would not have spoken it to Parikshit. But I mean, there were so many sages also, but that's not really how that knowledge gets lost. Knowledge gets lost by uh, misinterpretation. That, that is how knowledge gets lost. Uh, if uh, it is repeated, but if people add something or subtract something, therefore Srila Prabhupada made such again and again strong point that don't just pass it on this knowledge, what you heard from me. Uh, don't add anything, don't subtract anything, just as it is. So if people interpreting their own, uh, from with their own mind, uh, and then it gets turned, uh, it turns into something slightly different. And it's just like the Chinese whisper. We all know that it's a Chinese whisper, you have uh, uh, 10, 20 people in a circle in the room, and you say something in something in the person's ear next to you. He repeats it in the next person's ear, in the next, in the next, and misunderstandings coming in, and when it comes back, the person on the on the left of you, uh, actually then it is something different than what you originally told the person on the right of you. So, not by accidentally mishearing, that's just an example, but by misinterpretation, by interpreting her. Uh, said knowledge uh, in the there's so many in the Bhagavad Gita for instance there's so many interpretations uh, and so many it hasn't been passed on uh, only to the pure devotees uh, others have been coming in between who are not pure uh, and naturally we're not pure then our mental concoction goes in so these Bhagavad Gitas who have been around 200 different editions of the Bhagavad Gita they had all, let's take, uh, and we spoke about that, Dr. Radha Krishna, uh, Bhagavad Gita. He translates a verse very nicely, but in the purport he says, actually we are not supposed to surrender to Krishna, but to the unborn within Krishna. And these kind of interpretations coming in, and then the meaning gets lost. And then someone has to come and again uh, present it as it is Ben. No, I was going to just say something similar to to what you have said because um, as I have understood it, it's like uh, when it um, when the knowledge is not uh, transmitted by the pure devotee, um, it gets uh, diluted. It gets diluted. So the full potency um, like we're hearing now from Papa, it uh, loses that potency. It becomes more and more diluted. Uh, the more the more diluted it becomes, then that's when it doesn't have any uh, 
potency or the fact anymore. So that's how they lose. That's how the chain becomes broken. Yes. In that, so in that sense, it's like yes, yes. It, it loses its uh, its uh, its potency. Its purpose, its no, potency. Like you're, not longer, you're, you're not longer listening to something coming through the chain of the simplex succession. You're just listening to uh, someone's mind, someone's intellect. Mm. So therefore, it it only can then only appeal to the mind and the intellect. It can't appeal to the soul proper. So it's it's no longer spiritual, pure spiritual knowledge anymore. That is very nicely said, Ben. Yes, exactly like that. Noise has been introduced. If the uh, transmitter is not pure, even in, in in technology, if the transmitter is not pure, you're having a phone call huh, from India and uh, the transmitter is not poor, you hear <laughs> lots of noise is introduced. And that noise becomes louder than the actual message and you cannot hear the message anymore. Yes, that it cannot touch our heart anymore. The potency. I mean, Bhagavad Gita was there, 200 editions of Bhagavad Gita before uh, here in the Western countries. 200, or not only Western, India also. 200 editions of Bhagavad Gita, but no potency. The message has been lost because it didn't come to the transparent via medium of the pure devotee. Therefore, there is a parampara, the Bhagavad parampara. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta uh, describes this Bhagavad parampara. That's a parampara of pure devotees. And there can be gaps in between. There can be a uh, hundred and thousand years. That doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't go by physical uh, uh, parampara. That, that is a Babaji line, physical. Huh? One spiritual master gives a diksha to his disciples. He gives a diksha to his disciples, physical. There has to be both physical present and uh, the diksha is given and the beats. Uh, and uh, if that is not happening, then that parampara is broken. It's an hour, but, uh, it's a shiksha parampara. If someone today, let's say that knowledge is lost. Let's say that knowledge, uh, as uh, Srila Prabhupada has presented it, uh, as Srila Bhaktisiddhanta, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and so on. Let's say that is lost. If someone in a hundred years comes, uh, let's say all of Srila Prabhupada's books will be gone somehow or other. And all the devotees will be gone. But someone comes in, in a thousand years sir, and he connects with a thousand years before we set Acharya and connects in spirit. Then that that is a parampara. If one hears properly from the proper source and said hearing properly doesn't is not limited to time and space at all. It doesn't require physical hearing. It requires that transmission of Shabda Brahman, of the transcendental knowledge. That is the parampara. Therefore we say so much, put so much stress on the Vani, not physical presence, spiritual, the sound vibrations. That the parampara traces itself to sound vibration. The pure sound, and that not again, it doesn't mean the pure sound, purely pronunciation, no. The pure sound means that the original message is imparted into the heart of a conditioned soul. And if that message is imparted in the heart, and uh, that person is enlightened in the heart, and Krishna is established in the heart, becoming the Bhagavatam, we come into a chapter, the change in the heart. So if that has taken place, then that person can change someone else's heart. If someone is not pure, he cannot change anybody's heart, not even his own. Then your hand is up. Anybody else? These, these are actually very important points. Not physical presence. 
physical presence is inferior. Presence by sound, by the pure sound. Okay. Anything? And here again, Srila Prabhupada mentions, Therefore, the instruction of the Lord can be understood by the devotees only and no one else. So sometimes people speak about the Bhagavad Gita, or oh, I understand it like this, like Unless someone is a devotee, he cannot understand Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says that himself. Bhagavad Gita is for the devotees. And only devotees can understand. So if we come, the verse itself speaks of the most confidential subject which is instructed by the personality of God at himself. Can anybody say what he said? Most confidential subject. What what is what is Narada speaking about? Isn't there a Bhagavad Gita chapter? Anyone? Confidential, most confidential. Rashmi, what about you? Ben. That's chapter nine. That's right. That is chapter nine. Well chapter observed. Nine. Chapter nine, text two. Raja Vijaya, Raja Guyam. Let's hear. Translation. Uh, Raja Vijaya. Uh, 9 2. Uh, Raja Vijaya, Raja Guyam, Pavitram. I'm just trying to find that now. Uh, uh, Raja Vijaya, Raja Guyam. Pavitram, Idam, Utamam. Pratyak Savagamam Dar Dharmyam Susukam Kartum Avyayam. This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion, it is everlasting, and it is joyfully performed. Thank you. Great. This is a good verse. It gives dire, this knowledge, it gives direct perception of the self. That is the purpose of this transcendental knowledge. Direct perception, direct, of the self means also direct perception of Krishna. Once we have direction, direct perception of the self. We also have direct perception of Krishna. It goes hand in hand. So this knowledge can give us direct perception of the self and of Krishna. That's amazing. Which knowledge can do that? Nothing. Nowhere else to be found. Self-realization. Well, yes, okay, so the, the most confidential knowledge, that is a chapter 9, that's what we're talking about is culminating in the last verse of the chapter 934, which brings up, again, pure devotional service. Manmana bhava mad bhaktu mad namaskaru. Famous verse, engage your mind always in thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer obeisances to me. Worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come. That is the most confidential knowledge. How can we come to Krishna? Ben? No, I was just um, going to answer your original question. Yes, or, please. Or, or try to, anyway. No, this, uh, this uh, most confidential knowledge um, that was uh, knowledge of, uh, the most confidential knowledge is knowledge of Krishna. Uh, the most confidential knowledge is uh, is um, devotional service to Krishna. Mm. Above uh, different uh, branches of knowledge, for instance, uh, just like mundane knowledge, and then the, when mundane knowledge is is uh, develops, uh, one, uh, uh, one develops uh, uh, gyanam. And uh, Ganam is uh, um, becomes uh, 
again in terms of uh, understanding the impersonal aspect of God, and then even beyond this gyan is a gyan of uh, paramatma, and then that's that's more confidential than in, in the impersonal, uh, and then the the final the final. Um, uh, aspect is uh, the uh, knowledge of um, knowledge of Krishna himself, which is the most confidential knowledge. So this knowledge is uh, graded from confidential, more confidential, and the most confidential. Thank you. That's very nice. Confidential, more confidential, most confidential. So that is uh, tying up with Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. And Srila Prabhupada explains somewhere very nicely that it's just as the bhakti increases. As the bhakti, these, these are not separate categories like uh, the impersonalists and the Brahmachyoti and Brahman and the yogis with Paramatma, and the devotees with Bhagavan. These are not kind of separate compartments. It's a sliding scale, like so many things. It's a sliding scale as the bhakti increases. We're coming from uh, the impersonal understanding, we're coming to the localized Paramatma understanding, and as the bhakti increases more, someone becomes a devotee and has awareness of the personality of Godhead. Okay, let's move on. 31, who wants to do? 31, who hasn't done anything tonight? Amit. Yeah, Baba, I will read this. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, the microphone is yours. Okay. Um, text 31. Yenevahem Bhagavato. Vastu de Vastya de Asa Maya Num Bogum Avidam Yena Kachati Tat Patam Padam. Translation By the confidential knowledge, I could understand clearly the influence of the energy. I think we lost you, Amit. Or is it just me? No, I think we've lost uh, we've lost damage. Yes, we, your microphone, something not right. We've lost damage. We lost Amit. No, we cannot hear you, Amit. Amit, come back to us. <laughs> we cannot hear you. Amit, Hare Krishna. You had problems with your microphone when you came in today. I had problems with my microphone, but I know what. Uh, I muted my speaker on the laptop and that caused the problems. Hello. So many things. Amit, where are you? Yes, can you hear me? A bit better. Can you come closer? Is that better? Oh, that's much better. Okay, how far did you hear? Did you hear the puppet? Or? Oh, no, we didn't even hear the verse. Start with the verse again. Okay. Okay, you can hear me now, yeah? Yes, very well. Okay. Yenavam Bhagavato Vasya Devasya. No, not, not the Sanskrit words. Sorry, it's a translation. Translation, okay. By the confidential knowledge, I could understand clearly the influence of the energy of the Lord Sri Krishna, the creator, maintainer, and annihilator of everything. By knowing that, one can return to him and personally meet him. Purport. By devotional service or by the most confidential knowledge, one can understand very easily how the different energies of the Lord are working. One part of his energy is manifesting the material world. The other superior part of his energy is manifesting the spiritual world. And his immediate energy is manifesting the living entities who are serving either of the above mentioned energies. The living entities serving material entities are struggling hard for existence and happiness, which is presented to them as illusion. 
but those in the spiritual energy that are placed under the direct service of the Lord in the internal life, complete knowledge and perpetual bliss. The Lord desires, as he has directly said in the Bhagavad Gita, that all conditioned souls rotting in the kingdom of material energy come back to him by giving up all engagement in the material world. This is the most confidential part of knowledge, but this can be understood only by the pure devotees, and only such devotees enter the kingdom of the God to see him personally and serve him personally. The concrete example is Narada himself, who attained this stage of internal knowledge and internal bliss. And the ways and the means are open to all, provided one agreed to follow him in the footsteps of Sri Narada Muni. According to Shruti, the Supreme Lord has unlimited energy without effort by him. And these are described under these principal headings as the above mentioned. Thank you, Amit. Can you summarize? Yeah, I think, okay, okay what, what he's saying is, if you understand Lord Krishna properly, you will able to um, return back to God and meet him. He's saying a lot, lot of um, living entities are living under illusion, so it's, it's Maya. Um, and, but understanding the, that Lord Krishna is, has different energies, that's two sides, one, one, one part is to, to detach from the material world, and the other part is to understand the spiritual world. So by gaining this, understanding the the different energies, you let, um, a devotee can then return back to him and meet him. Thank you. Nice. Come back to him and meet him face to face. Yes, we do uh, like one day see if we have that desire of wanting to see Krishna face to face. So right now we see and understand and connecting with Krishna through his sound vibration, but we also can see Krishna face to face. So that day, that opportune moment will also come. Anyone has any, I mean, okay, here, the Lord desires as he has directly said in the Bhagavad Gita said, all conditions are rotting in the kingdom of the material energy. Come back to him by giving up all engagement in the material world. Where, what is he saying in the Bhagavad Gita? Which, I mean, it's directly mentioned. He has directly said in the Bhagavad Gita. Very interesting. Srila Prabhupada doesn't give any references uh, to Bhagavad Gita throughout the Bhagavatam, really. We have to find these references ourselves. So, what verse could that be? Anyone? What verse could that be? Sarvadam Parijaja. I thought of that as well. I'm so happy you're saying that because I wasn't quite that sure of it, uh, if that fits it, but uh, it kind of does fit it. So I'm really happy you saying that. Uh, so I'm not alone in thinking of it, that could be Sarvadharma Parijyacha. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Anything else could be said to this purport or this shloka? Anyone? Shall we take one more? Or oh, it's a long purport? Oh, it's a very long purport. I'll take one more. Why not? Rashmi, you haven't said anything. Let's take one more. Which verse is that now? 32. 32. 32, yes. Rashmi, are you happy to take on 32? Yes, Prabhu, I will do that. Thank you. The microphone is yours. Text 32. Etat 
संसुचितम ब्रह्मास तपत्रया चिकित्सितम यद ईश्वरे भगवती कर्मा ब्रह्मानि भावितम ट्रांसलेशन ओ ब्रह्मन ब्राह्मण व्यासदेव इट इज डिसाइडेड बाय द लर्नेड दैट द बेस्ट रेमेडियल मेजर फॉर रिमूविंग ऑल ट्रबल्स एंड मिजरीज is to dedicate one's activities to the service of the supreme lord personality of godhead shri krishna purport shri narad muni personally experienced that the most feasible and practical way to open the path of salvation or get relief from all miseries of life is to hear submissively the transcendental activities of the lord from the right and bona fide sources this is the only remedial process the entire material existence is full of miseries foolish people have manufactured out of their tiny brains many remedial measures for removing the three fold miseries pertaining to the body and mind pertaining to the natural disturbances and in relation with other living beings the whole world is struggling very hard to exist out of these miseries but men do not know that without the sanction of the lord no plan or remedial measure can actually bring about the desired peace and tranquility the remedial measure to cure a patient by medical treatment is useless if it is not sanctioned by the lord to cross the river or the ocean by a suitable boat to cross the river or the ocean by a suitable boat is no remedial measure if it is not sanctioned by the lord we should know for certain that the lord is the ultimate sanctioning officer and we must therefore dedicate our attempts to the mercy of the lord for ultimate success or to get rid of the obstacles on the path of success the lord is all pervading all powerful omniscient and omnipresent he is the ultimate sanctioning agent of all good or bad effects that we should therefore learn to dedicate our activities on to the mercy of the lord and accept him either as impersonal brahman localized pramatma or the supreme personality of godhead it does not matter what one is one must dedicate everything in the service of the lord if one is a learned scholar scientist philosopher poet etc then he should employ his learning to establish the supremacy of the lord try to study the energy of the lord in every sphere of life do not decry him and try to become like him or take his position simply by fragmental accumulation of knowledge if one is an administrator statesman warrior politician etc then one should try to establish the lord supremacy in statesmanship fight for the cause of the lord as shri arjun did in the beginning shri arjun the great fighter declined to fight but when he was convinced by the lord that fighting was necessary shri arjun changed his decision and fought for his cause simply similarly if one is a businessman industrialist agriculturalist etc then one should spend his hard earned money for the cause of the lord think always that the money which is accumulated in the wealth of the lord uh, think always that the money which is accumulated is the wealth of the lord wealth is considered to be the goddess of fortune lakshmi and the lord is narayan or the husband of lakshmi try to engage lakshmi in the service of lord narayan and be happy that is the way to realize the lord in every sphere of life the best thing is after all to get relief from all material activities and engage oneself completely in hearing the transcendental pastimes of the lord but in case of the absence of such an opportunity one should try to engage in the service of the lord everything for which one has specific attraction and that is the way of peace and prosperity the word sam sam chut sam suchitam in this stanza is also significant one should not think for a moment that the realization of narad was childish imagination only it is not like that it is so realized by the expert and erudite scholars and that is the real import of the word sam suchitam thank you rashmi 
Say something Say about that about verse. There is a lot of things there. There's lots of things uh, in this verse. So in the first uh, paragraph, in the first um, paragraph, um, he, uh, Srila Prabhupada is explaining that how uh, people generally, all the people are suffering from, in this material world, we are, uh, we are, we are, 100% going to suffer from the threefold miseries of material nature. And we are always looking for material solution to it. But Srila Prabhupada is saying, as long as we keep looking for that, we will get, uh, if we solve it, we will be happy. If we don't solve it, we will get distressed and it will be temporary, whatever result we get out of those material solutions. But if we want, uh, if we want happiness, if we want peace and happiness, then the only way is bhakti to do bhakti without, without accepting that the Lord is the proprietor of everything and it's the Lord whose plans which will finally work, we cannot be peaceful and happy. Once we accept that the Lord is proprietor of everything and he is our true friend also, then we will accept whatever a misery comes. We will try to find a solution, but at the same time, we will also accept that this is ultimately Lord's sanction is there in this. So that was the first part. Then in the second part, um, Krishna is, uh, sorry, Srila Prabhupada is explaining how, uh, is, uh, he's explaining about um, um, our, um, what's the word? I've forgotten the word. Our ashram, Varnashram Dharma. So whatever, whatever occupational duties you have to do, you are you are uh, under whatever occupational duties whatever ashram you have to do it dutifully but you have to do it according to the instructions of krishna so uh, so i asked this question today in in my, in the bhagavad gita class how do do our occupational duty according to instruction of krishna and the answer uh, i was uh, explained was that that means yes you you can use your so let's say you are a doctor you can use that uh, uh, whatever you have accumulated, whatever you are getting pay, you can use it for the service of Krishna. But also the duty has to be done according to the four uh, regulative principles. So, uh, for example, uh, if I'm a doctor, I cannot, uh, I should not engage in abortions because that is against Krishna's four regulative principles. I should not... Uh, uh, so I suppose somebody is a waiter, uh, then um, like uh, another example was given, uh, one uh, devotee said that uh, there was a, a devotee of Bhakti Ch Charu Swami and this devotee came from India to London and he got a big job, big uh, like manager job uh, with a lot of uh, money in this uh, uh, leather factory in London. And uh, uh, as soon as Bhakti Charu Maharaj uh, apparently found out about this, he told his, it was his disciple. He told him, you must immediately leave this job and come back to India because it is not according to the four regulative principle. It was a leather factory. So, and he, this devotee, of course, he, he, he followed his uh, spiritual master's advice and went back. So this is the, uh, in the second part, that is what, Srila Prabhupada is saying that you do your varnash, you do your occupational duty like Arjun did, but according to the instructions of Krishna, it should not be according to our own whims and fancies. So if I'm a doctor, I start doing abortions or whatever I want, and I have to be honest. And also, uh, uh, as part of the duty, you don't uh, just keep on working. So I'm, uh, we should only working six hours or eight hours a day. We should not, I, uh, I'm a doctor, so I should not be spending 12 hours a day. Then there will be no time left for devotional practice, devotional uh, uh, sadhana. So I must, I must use my wisdom there and use only six to eight hours. I have to do, take a job like that, that only six to eight hours are used for a job. Rest has to be dedicated to other duties and uh, ashram duties and also the uh, spiritual duties. Thank you, Rashmi Madhachi. Very nicely said. Thank you. I like that aspect, what you uh, inspired you by your Bhagavad Gita class this morning, uh, that our occupational duties should not be contrary to the regulative principles. And uh, your example with abortion is very appropriate because there are doctors say that don't 
care about that. They're getting extra money, they're making abortions uh, without any any doubt in their mind. Uh. But then again, they are not devotees. Yes, very nice. There is another dimension uh, um, as well huh, that Srila Prabhupada says, if one is a learned scholar, scientist, philosopher, poet, and so on, and so on, then he should employ his learning to establish supremacy of the Lord. We had said before uh, that uh, all poetry, you're mumbling something, Ben, I'll, I'll mute you. <laughs> I'll take you in a moment. Uh, whatever, if we're a philosopher, if we're a scientist, we should use our uh, knowledge and our position to establish the supremacy of the Lord. So, meaning, it has been, it has been a few hundred years back, uh, poetry, uh, arts, paintings, and so on, has all been in glorification of God. But that has been lost in the last few hundred years. Uh, and we spoke about that. I remember, Ben, you spoke about uh, the big uh, cathedrals, the big mosques, the big temples, uh, that all in glorification, all arts, but not only arts, sciences, uh, philosophy, uh, uh, poetry, uh, scholars, that should all somehow as a find a way of glorifying the Lord. Ben, you want to say something? No, I wanted to say something about, uh, in response to something Prabhupada said in his report. That was my initial question, but also I wanted to raise a point about uh, the fact that uh, uh, being abortion is like a, quite a controversial subject. Yes. Anything more? Yeah, I mean, like uh, Prabhupada, he says here, he says that... Um, that uh, we should learn to um, dedicate our activities unto the mercy of the Lord uh, and accept Him either as impersonal Brahman, localized Paramatma, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It does not matter what one is. What do you understand by that? Uh, it's like... Uh, I mean, I understand it doesn't matter what one is. Anyone can be a devotee. It doesn't, there's no distinction. There's no discrimination between that. But yeah, it's just that, um, well, could you say in a sense that every one of these um, people who are engaged either in the impersonal, uh, the localized or the the Bhagavan aspect of Krishna, well, obviously the topmost uh, realization, uh, they're all transcendentalists in some sense. They are transcendentalists. They're classed as transcendentalists, no doubt. All yeah. three. But, where's a but coming in? Uh, by, as, as we spoke before, by increasing the bhakti, the devotional aspect, then by set increasing like a slider, increasing the bhakti, then out of the impersonalist, it becomes a yogi. There's more bhakti there, and it becomes a devotee. There's more bhakti there. So by increasing the bhakti, that's not static. Someone, a mayavadi, that's different. They're offenders. The impersonalist, uh, Gyani, impersonalist Gyani, by, he will also come to Krishna. Vahunam Janmanamante, Gyana Vaman Prabhatyante, Vasudeva Saramiti, Samahatma Sudurlava, but after many, many births and death. He will also come to Krishna. It's just a long way around. Why not immediately surrender to Krishna? If we have to surrender to Krishna anyway, after being a Gyani, after being an impersonalist, then if we, why not immediately surrender to Krishna? Why is spending so many births and deaths so much pain? 
Ben. Oh, it's like Prabhupada is saying here that uh, everyone and anyone can uh, can dedicate their uh, profession, their career, their their labor, their uh, whatever uh, towards the service of the Lord. It doesn't matter what what one is, um, what his job is, or in any field of life, you know that 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 uh, they can dedicate their their um, their varna in a sense to Krishna. Yes. Even if we look back in the varnashram system, just a little bit back in time. Uh, in the Vedic society, it didn't matter. Nowadays, uh, people feel uh, a shooter, a worker, at least here in the Western countries, uh, it, it's low, it's low. And if you are a, a politician, you are higher up. And if you're an artist or a celebrity, or even higher up. Uh, and, uh, so this uh, status is, uh, uh, between low and high. But in the Vedic system, it wasn't like that. It didn't matter if you're a Shutra, if you uh, a Brahmin, if you uh, a Vaishya, Kshatriya, it doesn't matter. What matters is that whatever you are in the Vanashram system, whatever your occupational duty is, you just use it to glorify the Lord. A, a functioning society needs the four varnas. In fact, Krishna has created those four varnas. I mean, um, could it be said that, I mean, we see in this present age how there is so much um, discord and unhappiness, uh, so much uh, stratification uh, in, in uh, terms of uh, different um, occupational um, duties. And this, this is uh, because of uh, resentment uh, amongst people because obviously a lot of uh, occupations, they are well paid and other, 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 other occupations are People just struggle on low incomes uh, like this, you know. Um, but uh, here it's uh, it's like saying that um, uh, missing from the equation uh, today is the fact that uh, Krishna is not in the center. So therefore, you have all this. Um, all these, uh, all this resentment, all this frustration and uh, ill will and bad feelings amongst all these different, uh, different uh, classes of uh, people in the society, you know, because uh, they, they have a class system, you know, uh, high, high class, uh, kind of aristocracy, royal people, and then you have like uh, like different middle class and then you have like a working class people and you know there's always like uh, tensions between these uh, different classes of people but what appears to me to be the problem is that Krishna is not in the center therefore that's this is the result the result is all this uh, all this uh, quarrel and uh, all this uh, ill feeling amongst people. A lot of hatred as well, you know, and dissatisfaction and all these negative uh, things that we can, we can uh, put our finger on, you know. And all for lack of uh, Krishna not being in the center anymore. That exactly is the point. <coughs> that is well expressed. Rashmi? I have an example of a, 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 a very saintly person. He was, uh, uh, you've ha you must, you have definitely heard of Saint Redas. 
What's his name? Raidas. Raidas. He was yep. the guru yep. of Mirabai, but his occupational duty he was he used to cure leather. So he used to collect the leather of uh, dead animals and he used to cure it. it means process it or whatever uh, you know whatever they did with it. Uh, so that was his occupational duty. His occupational duty was of a shudra, but he was a very very uh, elevated soul. He was actually. He initiated a lot of people. One of them was Mirabai. I just wanted to. I remembered his example. Yes, very nice, very nice. And uh, you see, can I, make, can I make a point in relation to that? Can I just say something in relation to your comment uh, uh, no. before you go ahead? Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, Krishna is not in the center. So what is in the center? What creating all these disturbances? Sense gratification is in the center. Therefore, because if the focus is sense gratification, automatically you said, oh, he gets more money, less money, money. It's all about money and money is for sense gratification. In Vedic society, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. Krishna was in the center. So every occupational duty from the Brahmin to the Shudra, uh, they were just concerned of satisfying Krishna in whichever, it didn't matter which occupational duty they were in. Today it matters, the status matters very much. Ben. Now what was the, uh, what was the, the point that was, that was made? Because, yeah, about this uh, devotee, he was uh, working as a, a tanner, um, uh, curing hides from um, passed away cows. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make the point that it doesn't matter what uh, what one's varna is. Uh, there's no distinction. There's no discrimination uh, between who can become a pure devotee of the Lord. It doesn't matter what you do. There's no precondition, no qualification, you know, uh, to be a pure devotee of the Lord. I mean, Lord Chaitanya has made the point even that, uh, you know, Chandala, which is like a dog eater, the lowest, uh, supposedly lowest of the low people, they can be, become a pure devotee of the Lord simply by taking up the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I think here we have to stop. We do five minutes more. Kirtan, uh, otherwise we're running a bit late. These are very interesting uh, uh, topics. Huh? And uh, if Krishna is in the center and the goal is to go back home to Godhead, the goal is to please Krishna, then Varna doesn't matter. And Money doesn't matter, and sense gratification doesn't matter because it's not the goal. So our society is topsy turvy. So let's let's stop here. Otherwise, we're running too much over time, and we'll do a bit of kirtan and we call it uh, an end of the day. So. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Rama
Krishna Hare Madame, 
Let us offer our most respectful obeisances, the all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. They are just like the desire trees, and they can fulfill the desires of everyone. They're full of compassion, with a form and conditions. So Hare Krishna. Here we stop our lockdown for tonight. Our meeting of the sages in Naimi Sharanya. Maybe we should remain, rename that to meeting of the sages. Uh, Sage Ben Hare Krishna. Very nice, wonderful contribution. Vaishnavi, Rashmi, Rishi, Dharm and uh, we have a, a great sage in Tanzania, Samir, Hare Krishna. So that was our direct association with all these great personalities. Again, direct association with Srila Prabhupada, with Vyasadeva, with Narada Muni. And when this assembly are happening, where devotees discuss Lord's pastimes and Srimad Bhagavatam, then usually Lord Brahma is there and Lord Shiva also comes. And many other personnel is taking part uh, and relishing these spiritual topics. There was once, I think we mentioned that, and Ben, you know more about it, uh, in Soho Street uh, Temple in London, uh, Srila Prabhupada mentioned at one point uh, that I think Lord Brahma is there uh, when Kirtan or something class going on, Lord Brahma is there. And then from that day onward, devotees have made a seat for Lord Brahma. Can you say something more about that? You find, you find an empty seat, an apparently empty seat on the altar. On the right, left, I don't remember. Ben, what what do you say? Um, I mean, as far as I can remember, this uh, 
this story because uh, um, well, Prabhupada being the pure devotee, he, um, he saw great uh, personalities would come, like Lord Brahma and Aradha Muni, come to the kirtans, to the classes. And yes, there's a... Um, is, it a is it a small Vyasa sun? Yes, yes, uh, that's what it is. It's kept on the on the altar. Uh, on the right, on the right or left? Of, uh, it's. Uh, I think on the right. When you're looking towards the altar, and I think it's on the it's on the right hand side. Okay. So the small Vyasa sun for Lord Brahm, Brahma yes. to sit on when he wants to come and uh, partake. Yeah, the Krishna. Uh, in the Krishna Kata. <laughs> Beautiful, yes. Yeah, nice story. Yes, and another occasion, Srila Prabhupada was laughing, laughing uh, during some occasion, and then after that, asking why you were laughing. And Narada Muni was there, and he was dancing in a very funny way. So people just can see that. <clears throat> Whenever there is Krishna Kata going on, yes, there will be uh, great personalities there. Uh, and uh, devas will come, and that is not unusual. We may not, in our conditioned state, may be able to see them. But the time will come when we come out of our conditioned state and we're coming into the more and more pure state, and all these things will be revealed to us. And we can see these great personalities. But, um, I mean, what to speak of these great personalities? But even Krishna has appeared towards to uh, to Prabhupada. Yes. On uh, numerous occasions. Yes. So. Hare Krishna. Sure. So, <coughs> any one else, Rashmi? You have anything else, Samir? Are you warm in Africa, Samir? Or are you cold? Try to. It's very warm here. It's very hot. In fact, um, I just put the air conditioning on. It's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> air conditioning. You're, you're, lucky, even... you're lucky. You're lucky. You're very lucky. <laughs> no, if it's too hot, it's also not nice, isn't it? <laughs> well, we yeah, always need a, we need a happy medium, don't we? We always want, when it's cold, we want hot. And when it's hot, we want cold. And we'll never find the ideal temperature in between. There is no ideal temperature. Our only pleasure is relieving the discomfort and that we take as pleasure. If it's too hot, you put the air condition on, you said, oh, that is very nice. But actually you were escaping the too much heat and you get relief from that too much heat and discomfort. And therefore you put the air conditioning on and you think uh, now you're happy. When it's too cold, it's just the opposite. And there's never the right in between for where. And if we find that point, uh, it's not too cold, not too cold. We're not too hungry. We're not too full. We're not too this and not too that. We might even find that point, but that lasts maybe only a split second or not very long, not very long. And this is our. This is our. I, I read this somewhere today. This is our plight in the material world that we uh, we think that um, uh, relief uh, from suffering um, is happiness. Yes. And today we, we spoke about so we spoke about that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we stop. Thank you very much. We'll see you all back on Wednesday. Uh, Amit had to go and Amma had to go. So see you, you. You said that you were going to put an extra class in somehow. Um, not at the moment. We'll wait okay. a little bit longer. But you mentioned something. Uh, what did you say? Can you share this meeting? Only no, you I mean, can. Yeah, you have. Uh, I, I mean, I tried to send some pictures. Oh. Um, but I can't, only you can share content in this uh, oh. meeting. Uh, I don't know if you can give me permission. There might be some settings somewhere. Permission.
I look into that. Yes, we want you to send pictures. You are a picture sender. You have always sent such very nice pictures. There must be a way. I look into that and by next meeting we'll hopefully find a solution. Prabhuji, I'll say something very funny to end the class. Uh, what happened today? Oh, let's uh, hear. Let's hear. <laughs> So I was trying to, uh, I was doing Bhagavad Gita, one of the verses with my father. We are on the second chapter. And then, with, your, uh, with your father? Yeah, with, with my father. Okay. We, okay. we do it. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, he was, he was, he has read, uh, you have given him a, you had gifted him a book of uh, uh, Prabhupada. Yes, Leela. So uh, he started telling me. So I somehow the prep topic of Srila Prabhupada came and I was explaining to him what is the use of, you know, if I, if somehow you manage to live for 100 years and you're not going to use that life, you might as well finish off your body now, die now only and then take a new birth, fresh new body. So it's all useless just continuing to live, 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 live. And this this king is living for 100 years. Uh, but after after that, what? if he's not done any bhakti. So then he started talking about Srila Prabhupada's journey and, you know, on that uh, ship and everything. Yeah. So we all spoke that. Then we came to the Maha Mantra, how Srila Prabhupada used to sit in the park. He was telling me all this. He used to sit in the park and he used to sing Hare Krishna, Maha Mantra. And so I said, see, all the hippies and drunkards, everybody was chanting. So uh, why you are also not chanting that one round? So he didn't say anything. Then I told him, okay, fine. You don't want to chant Maha Mantra. So I have looked up two other mantras for you. One is called <laughs> Gopal Mantra and one is called Mahavishnu Mantra. And they are very laborious, but it's up to you. I will I will uh, learn it for your sake and I will teach you. And then you chant that. Now that uh, Gopal Mantra, uh, a lot of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they chant this mantra. And I found it. It is so lengthy and it's got five, six <laughs> Sanskrit verses in it. So so I started to purposely uh, read it out to him. And he said, oh, no, 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 stop. Then I said, okay, why, fine. If you don't like this, let's look at Mahavishnu Mantra. So again, I started reading. So again, I read five, six lines, all elaborate Sanskrit verses. I could not even pronounce them properly. Uh, so he's saying, oh, leave it. Actually, I will stick to Mahamantra. <laughs> all right, Krishna. <laughs> Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So he said, okay, leave it. I will stick to the, I will, I will do the Maha Mantra. So I said, are you sure? So he said, yes, yes, I will do one Maha Mantra every day. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yes, that's a funny story. Rashmi, will you, what is a Gopal Mantra? I have no clue, uh, uh, Prabhuji, what it is. It is some five, six lines of Sanskrit verses. I have no clue. I just, you know, I listen to a lot of uh, uh, people, um, this and in one of the people, uh, he's he's uh, he speaks very very nicely. He talks about I was listening about Adv Advaita Acharya's appearance day, and he was he met, somehow somewhere some there was a mention of Gaudiya of this Gopal mantra. So I thought, okay, let me look it up for him because I am trying to convince him to chant now because he only chants Hanuman Chalisa. So I'm trying to convince him to chant. So I came upon that. So I presented mm. it to him personally. Can you send I have it no to me? Proof. Can you send it to me? I'll find it. Uh, yeah, I'll find it again and yeah. send it. I to think you. it's a it's a six mantra of the Gayatri. It, uh, it didn't sound like that. No, no, uh, not the Gayatri mantras. There are six Gayatri mantras, Vaishnava Gayatri mantras. It might be that you will know. I will send it to you. Uh, so apparently, these uh, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, a lot of them, uh, they uh, a lot of them they chant this, uh, they do this Gopal mantra as well. But yes. the amount which has to be done is very, very much more than uh, uh, sixty-four rounds. Like the Gaudiya Vaishnavas in India, they do sixty-four rounds of Maha Mantra. But of this, it was there was in thousands the number. <laughs> Hare it sounded pretty much impractical to me, but. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada has made the adjustments for us here in the Western countries, and by his mercy, uh, he can make such adjustments and be achieving the same goal, because he has negotiated even the sixteen rounds from sixty-four to thirty-two to sixteen. He has negotiated that for us with Krishna. You have to go, Amma. Okay, we also have to go. And uh, we stop here and we'll see you all back on Wednesday.
Dharm, <laughs> Hare Krishna, Rashmi, and Ben. Hare Krishna, Hare Paul, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Hare Krishna, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to that recording today. I was almost already you know, putting it, uh, final touches on it. And every time I come that last bit, bye-bye. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Bye-bye. <laughs>